Hello. Hello, hello, hello. It has been a few days since I have been live on TikTok. And for somebody who's used to being on here every day, uh, taking that much time off is a little weird. So it's nice to be able to get back on here. Uh, what we're going to be working on today, I've got four state quarter coin rings that are already punched and folded. So we just need to size these. And uh, if you guys want to hang out and watch, you're more than welcome. Uh, if you have any questions while I work, feel free to put them in the chat. And I'm just going to get right into it. First one should be Ohio. So we're just going to sand that cut edge, get it nice and smooth. This one's going to be a size 7. It's not going to be super big. But yeah, uh, if you guys have never seen me before, I'm Coin Ring Maker. I make coins into rings. Today we're making state quarter coin rings. They have been pretty popular on the TikTok shop recently. If you want to check them out, you can tap the little shopping cart at the bottom of the screen there. All right. I'm just going to start stretching this out until... There's a bit of a gap you can see between the ring and the ring stretcher. Once we close that in, we should be good. There we go. No more gap. So that should have us at about nine and a quarter, nine and a half. Yeah, a little over size nine. Target size for this one is seven, so that's perfectly fine. From here, you can see it's a little wider at the top than it is on the bottom. So we're going to start reducing this, even in the band out. And then we're going to get rid of that inside lip right there. But first, we want to make sure the walls are nice and even. So I'm going to go over here to the one-ton arbor press. And reduce it down a little bit. So I like to uh, get rid of this lip around a size 9. It's a lot easier than a size 7. So we're just going to go ahead and do that right now. Just because it fits in this tool a little easier while the ring is big. So we'll get rid of that and then finish sizing it. If you guys want to check out what these look like when they're finished, you can tap the little shopping cart down here. If you have any questions, let me know. They are available in all 50 states. And they're made from real quarters. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this live, tap the screen. And this is called a deburring tool. I know someone's going to ask, but that's what we're going to use to cut away that inside lip right there. A little bit of extra metal. How's it going, Splash? So I haven't been live for a couple days. It's nice to get back. Doing good. Round and round, yes sir. How long does it take uh, to make one from start to finish? I really try not to rush. Um, if I'm not filming it, I could probably make one in about 20 minutes. Uh, filming it, I, usually I'm answering questions and stopping as I go, so it can take a bit longer. But, like, I'd rather have a really nice ring than make a ring really fast. And every coin kind of acts differently, so it's, it's really variable. Well, I've been doing this <laughs> pretty much every day for the last four years. Uh, that was not the plan, but that's, that's how it's gone. And uh, I couldn't do it without the support of uh, people here on TikTok. So if you do like my work, I do invite you to check it out. Tap the little shopping cart at the bottom of the screen. Uh, at least you can do is read some of the reviews. 
I think we're over 60 reviews on it now. And uh, you guys can put a heart on the reviews. Let them know it was helpful. Uh, yeah, that helps a lot. Uh, if anybody else has any questions, let me know. Yeah, I like hyper specialized into this on accident. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But I was able to quit my job, and now I just uh, make coins into rings on TikTok full time. It's pretty cool. Do I have other rings? Yeah, I have a bunch. Uh, if you want to see my full selection, go to my profile and uh, tap the link there. And that'll take you to all the other rings. I don't have all of them here on TikTok, but I am slowly adding them. So if you want to see what I have available on TikTok, if you have coupons here, uh, there's a little shopping cart icon. No, it's not a shopping cart. It's like a shopping bag on my profile. It's like my store. And uh, there's, there's quite a few things there as well. But if you're looking specifically for the state quarter coin ring, that'll be the little shopping cart down here. That's the shopping cart I was thinking of. So I do use a couple different deburring blades because uh, they have like different angles. They're different sizes and they just cut differently. So I'll start with that little one with the red handle. That one will get rid of a lot of material. But this one with the bright blue handle leaves a really nice finish. Like it doesn't remove a lot of material, but it really smooths it out nicely. So having a couple different styles of deburring tools is pretty handy. Like I thought just having one was good, but no, get, get a couple different types of blades going, experiment with them, and you can get some really nice results. All right. So now we've got the inside edge all cut away. We've got to get it down to a size seven. Right now it's about a size nine. And this can be a little tricky because as it reduces down, these tend to not really reduce evenly. So we may have to stretch it out and fix it and then reduce it a little more. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And uh, if you want to check out this product, tap the shopping cart at the bottom of the screen. Thanks for watching. So I do a little bit on each side of the ring. That tends to help it fold more evenly. But it always seems to go a little askew, especially getting this small. That doesn't look terrible, but it is a little, little wonky. So yeah, we're gonna stretch it out a little bit. Start with the reeded side down and make sure that is like parallel with the ground. And then stretch it out and that'll correct all the wonkiness on the other side of the ring. I'll flip it over, make sure that's nice and even with the ground, you can see there's a much bigger gap on this side than on that side of the ring. You can see how uneven it is. It is hard to get <laughs> stuff to focus on TikTok sometimes. But yeah, okay. So that's much more even. I don't know if you guys see the difference, but I'm a stickler for details. I really want the band to look nice. Sounds like the table's going to fall over. It's really the back of the table. It's like this thing. I need to secure it up here. It's a little loose. It's got all this crap on it. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, 
is definitely something I need to fix. That looks much more even. All right. Probably a little smaller than a seven. It's about it's almost there. We'll stretch it up a little bit. If anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If you're enjoying this live, tap the screen, hit the follow button. Check out the shopping cart down here. Thanks for watching. You like the sound of the metal clanking. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, um, unintended, unintended, like, ASMR that happens here at coinringmaker.com. So, you're not the first to feel that way. All right, the next one we got to stretch up is main. We're going to start again by smoothing the cut edge here. So, if there's any, like cracks or scratches on this edge, when we start to stretch it on the ring stretcher, those cracks will grow and it'll actually split the ring. So that's why I'm sanding this edge and making sure it's nice and smooth before we start stretching it. Precautionary. Like this 30 seconds right here has saved so many rings. Before I did this, I had a much higher failure rate. It's as simple as uh, just buffing that edge a little bit. Is it legal to do this to US currency? Yes. So this is very similar to like uh, penny smasher machines. You might find it like Six Flags or SeaWorld or museums or national parks. So it is illegal to fraudulently alter currency. But as far as like making jewelry out of it, uh, that's that's legal. It's pretty pretty cool. There are different uh, rules, regulations, and laws and, uh, for different countries. So like, don't go out there and just start destroying <laughs> coins willy nilly. But at least in the United States, uh, you can make jewelry out of coins, which is lucky for me because that's what I do all day. I do okay. It's a bit strange, uh, solely marketing on the internet. Uh, sometimes I'm very, very busy, and sometimes it's like crickets. Um, but it, it tends to balance out well enough to make a living. I'm trying my best. What does that machine do? It's a one-ton arbor press. So it, it uses leverage to just apply pressure. Uh, and what I have underneath it is a 17 degree die. So the combination of those two kind of shrink the uh, band down, like squishes it, makes it smaller. How much does it cost for the machines I have? Uh, the one ton arbor press you can pick up for, I don't know, 40 or 50 bucks. Uh, this ring stretcher is a bit more expensive. The first one I got was like a hundred bucks. This one's closer to like four to five, but it's like a name brand one. And I make jewelry every day, so it was an excusable expense. Um, altogether, I probably spent a couple grand on tools. Uh, but the first year I made them, I spent maybe 200 bucks. Um, 
So you can do it with really basic like caveman tools, but you can get much nicer results uh, if you uh, invest in better tools. But that's pretty much true for anything. Like I said, I've been doing this for four years, <laughs> pretty much every day. Uh, so I've, I've definitely spent more than the average coin ring maker would, I think, on tools. But I put them to good use. And I, I don't really buy anything that I'm not going to use. If anybody else has any questions, let me know. If you want to check out the state quarter coin rings, you can tap the little shopping cart down here. Uh, thanks for watching. See, it's really nice. Like, in the past, before I started doing this, whenever I bought a tool, like, it never paid for itself. Like, it was always like, well, dang, I spent that much on this tool. I'll use it whatever but it never paid for itself now that i run a business when i buy a tool it tends to pay for itself which is really just it's i don't know it's like an out of out of the world experience it's so wild you are a great guy to explain everything in such a nice way well thanks for watching joe i appreciate it i mean for these particular rings it's a little more expensive um, because I, I go for higher grade coins. It's, it's closer to like 50 cents to a dollar. Um, other coins I work on are more expensive. Like I do silver and stuff like that too. I've even done gold coins. So there's a, there's a pretty decent range of coins I work on. As far as how valuable they are. Thanks for the roses, bro. How are you doing? I try to make it an enjoyable experience. We keep it nice and calm in here. I've always been a big fan of uh, teaching people too. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask, don't hold back. I like answering questions. It gives me something to do while I work. And you guys learn stuff too. Which is great. Knowledge is power. Let's share it. Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Hey, I haven't been on TikTok Live for, I think, like five or six days. So it's nice to be able to get back on here and do some work. that. Now we're going to take it down to a size 7. Not too bad. Sorry if this is a little shaky. My lights are being weird. Let's see if we can quit that pulsing. That looks better. So, um, with like copper shavings, you can see this coin is mostly copper. I used to say this, but there's not really anything I can do with this material. Um, but I do save like 90% silver and fine silver and any other like precious metal shavings. And I have played around a little bit with like melting those down into like little ingots. Um, so that's, that's mostly what I've done with them so far. 
why do I have duct tape on the machine? I have tape on a couple places here. So this is not the highest quality uh, Arbor Press. Um, this part right here, there's a little screw that holds this piece to like this bar that goes all the way through. And this would always fall off. So I Gorilla glued it and Gorilla taped it. And this is held for over four years. Um, so that was a pretty decent solution. Um, this handle also came with like little rubber caps on each end of this. And those both fell off. So I have made one out of uh, mostly electrical tape. And this one is duct tape with a nickel domed on the end i had duct tape on both sides but the duct tape on this one fell off yeah i mean whatever works it works if you work it nothing wrong with a redneck they're handy if i save enough copper it'll add up i don't know man like after four years of doing this i probably had like four ounces of copper which is i don't know like maybe 30 bucks is it's really just not it's not worth it i don't know and the cleanup for this stuff if i like knock it over is is a pain so i just dump it in the trash i ain't gonna lie but everything else i save it and try and reuse i did save it for a while i saved it for about a year and a half and it it just kind of got in the way more than anything else. It was like one of those spring cleaning days and I was just like, I'll just get rid of this. If I was making a thousand coins a day, sometimes I get close. You wouldn't believe it. Like this listing down here has been live for like a month and a half. And I think, I don't know, what's the sale count on these? Let me tap on that and check real quick. It's like 460 something last time I checked. It's crazy. So that's why I haven't been able to go live. I've just been making rings day and night for like the last five days. It's been crazy. Yeah, 460. That's what I thought. In a month and a half, dude. And that's really tricky too. Because when you sell on TikTok, you have to ship like three days from when they ordered. So it is really hard to like keep up with <laughs> when they're flying in like they did. We're at about six and a half. Head on over here. I'm going to go ahead and stretch it to about seven and a half. I bet you feel like Gollum. My precious. Some rings are really hard to let go. Like sometimes I do just an extraordinary job. Like even for my standards, I'm like, golly, that ring is freaking awesome. And it'll fit me just right, but I have to ship it. That's rough. Those are the hardest ones to let go. But I've gotten better at it. So when I mess up a ring now, I just, I get that one. <laughs> it's been a while since I made myself a ring. <laughs> I haven't messed one up in a minute. Bittersweet. What I'm trying to do is get the reeded edge here right on the line of size seven. It's really very close. 
I overdid it. It's too much. Sometimes you gotta do a lot of back and forth to get it just right. Are the gold rings harder to make because the metal is softer? The gold rings are harder to make because they are stressful. Um, they act very similar to like copper clad. Um, fine silver is probably the softest thing I've worked on. Like gold was a little tougher. Uh, I think the one I worked on was 24 karat. So there's some copper in it. But not a lot. Uh, it really wasn't incredibly difficult to work on. Uh, it was a quarter ounce. So it wasn't super big or anything. It came out really nicely. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't film that one. So I was super stressed about it. <laughs> uh, I was like, I can't worry about the shot and making this ring at the same time. So that one I did all by myself. But it came out really nicely. How many hours does it take to make a ring? It really depends on the coin. So the first year I started making coin rings, I um, pretty much only worked on quarters. So I got really, really good at quarters. I made them every day for 365 days. So I can make a quarter coin ring like rushed in maybe 10 minutes. Um, a good one, probably 30 minutes. So that's with like packing and stuff too. But like larger coins take longer, 90% uh, silver is a bit tougher, so I have to anneal it more often, so that takes longer. Um, I've had Morgan dollars I've worked on for multiple days, uh, just trying to get them just right. So it's, it's really variable. Every coin acts different, but I'm pretty good at quarters. I can do them pretty quickly. Uh, anything bigger than that, like a half dollar or a dollar, or a one ounce round uh, typically take over an hour if not longer okay this one is Missouri yeah if you want to see the full list of what I have on sale there's a link on my profile if anybody's interested in getting one of these state quarter coin rings I've got them for all 50 states uh, tap the shopping cart down here there's a good chance TikTok's giving you a coupon so tap the shopping cart, it'll let you know if you have a coupon. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hit the follow button if you want to. This one is a size eight. So it's gonna be a little easier to size than the last two, which were size seven. This one's already looking really, really nice. What I'm going to do next is remove this inside lip right here. There's a bit of raised metal right there. You can see it. We're going to get rid of that. I came back from a hike and my ring was gone. I need another Tennessee. I, I'm happy to make you one, man. Uh, you can use the coupon code WELCOME. That'll save 10% if you go through the, uh, the link in my profile. I wish I had another coupon I could throw at you off off the top of my head. That's the only active one I have right now. How do I get the state and date perfect? Practice. I'm amazed that the words don't get distorted when you stretch and compress. Um, at a certain point, they can. So if I stretch this past uh, like a size 12, uh, you would definitely start to see some, some stretching and distortion. This really hasn't... Um, been stretched that much but yeah if if you got if you got to like size 13 size 14 you would definitely see some distortion that's when the metal starts to uh, do its own thing uh, so that's why I stop at size 12 that's that's the last size where they're really nice and crisp Oh yeah, uh, if anybody needs a half or quarter size for these rings, uh, just leave a note when you place your order. And the actual size range for them is 4 to 12. 
So if you need something smaller or larger than what's actually offered on the listing, just leave a note when you place your order. Um, I had to sacrifice some ring sizes to get all 50 states listed. So there are actually more ring size options. Uh, do I do dimes, nickels, pennies? I don't do nickels or pennies. Uh, my experience with nickels is they're just too small and thick to really make good rings, and their details do get distorted. With uh, just getting them into this shape, it looks bad. Um, pennies I've tried to work on, but usually when someone wants a penny ring, they want a more modern year, uh, something after like 1982, and those are all like zinc coated in copper, which is not good for making jewelry. So I got to turn those down. And the copper pennies are just really difficult. Um, so I don't do them very often. But dimes I do have. Uh, if you go through the link in my profile, I have 90% silver dime rings. Uh, silver quarters also through the link in my profile. Uh, half dollars through the link in my profile. I think 90% silver half dollars are a great option for like a men's band. The details are really nicely pronounced and it's a bit thicker than these. Like these aren't a bad band size, but most guys want something a little thicker. Half dollars are about twice as thick and usually the text is bolder. And I, I think those are a good option if you guys are looking for a, a coin ring. If anybody else has any questions, let me know. If you're enjoying the live, tap the screen a couple times. Do I have a training course? Not specifically. I do have a YouTube channel called Coin Ring Maker that has tutorial videos on it. And I have a recommended tool list on my website, coinringmaker.com. Uh, it's one of the top few buttons. I need to fix the buttons because they don't look great, but there is one that says recommended tool list. Um, so those two resources are, are going to save you a lot of time, but I don't have like a direct training sort like course. Uh, I do also uh, answer questions on my live. So if you do get started on this, you run into some trouble, hit me up on here. I'm happy to help you. Thanks for sharing the live. We got an order. Let's go. That's the first order of the day. Hey, orders have been a little slow today. If you want to check these out, tap the little shopping cart at the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Oh, that only works through my website. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't... I don't think I have any like coupon codes here on TikTok. I will try and make one today. That's my bad. I gave bad directions. and cleaned up people love the ring i love to hear it man sorry you lost it that's no fun at all good for you for getting out taking a hike and exercising but you know what's going to be interesting is uh somebody's going to find your ring and be like whoa what is this? 
<laughs> Some other hiker. You know, pick that thing up. It's going to be the coolest hike find ever. Size 8 on the dot. Let's go. Alright, there's our Missouri quarter coin ring. And these do get cleaned up and polished. It's just kind of a boring process. And I've got other rings to make, so we're going to go ahead and go on to the next one. So there are two things you can do to keep them from splitting. What she's talking about is like this, right? This is the worst thing that can really happen to a coin ring. Split it. Um, first thing you can do to prevent it is keep this cut edge as smooth as possible. Uh, for that, I use nail file blocks and I just use the roughest edge. It's usually side number four. And these are perfect for like quarter coin rings you just folded. It fits just right. You just smooth that edge. And you can actually hear, like if your ears are good, you can hear when it's smooth. Like you know when you're done because it'll be less noisy. You just get all them scratches and cracks sanded down. This works a lot better than sandpaper too. Sandpaper usually gets really tore up when you try to do this. These blocks tend to survive much longer. And now we've got a really nice smooth edge. So those cracks usually start on this cut edge from like a scratch or a, a micro fracture or whatever. And once you start stretching it, that crack will expand and split the ring. The second thing you can do is anneal often. Now, if these were 90% silver, I would be annealing them throughout the process. These are copper clad. I've been working with them for like four years, so I really know um, like the stretching limits of these. I don't recommend doing it this way. I recommend you anneal them at least once while you work on them. But I've done this enough. I know what to do to prevent them from splitting. I make it look easier than it is. Um, but yeah, those are the two things you can do is keep the cut edge smooth and you can do that multiple times throughout the process. So after you stretch it, you can smooth it again. It's going to help a lot. Or you can uh, anneal often. Those are the, the two things I totally skipped the first year I made rings and had a lot more failures. I finally gave in to annealing for the most part. You can see I'm still a bit of a kneeling rebel, but uh, it'll save you a lot of rings if you anneal. Washington is a size 7, another size 7. A lot of size 7s today. Alright, go over here. I'm going to even up the uh, band so it's a nice straight wall, so it'll be easier to hold in my little tool. Just a little bit of correction, so yeah, it looks much better. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If you guys want to check out these state quarter coin rings, tap the little shopping cart at the bottom of the screen. All 50 states are available. I can do them in size 4 to 12, as well as half and quarter sizes. If you don't see your size listed, uh, just leave a note when you place your order. Uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, uh, like I said, uh, just pick Philadelphia, pick another ring size, like uh, 9 or something, and then just leave a note that says you would like size 11. I can do that for you, no problem. I do apologize that it has to, we have to go kind of around to get her done, but I can do them. Don't see Philadelphia. Should be there. I tell you what, uh, if you can't find it, uh, just pick another state and then in your note put Philadelphia size 11 and we'll, I'll get it worked out. I check out every order, so whatever you put in the note, that's, that's what we'll do. A 
if anybody else is having any trouble, let me know. TikTok shop can be a little weird. But I try, I try my best to work around her. Get you guys what you're looking for. <laughs> it, it can be addicting. Not for everybody, though. You gotta have at least an ounce of patience. So hopefully he's a, he's a patient man. So number one problem with coin ring making is if you rush it, you will fail. You gotta take your time. So different coins uh, take a different amount of time. Larger coins uh, can take an hour to several hours. Uh, I've been making quarter coin rings for about four years. So I can make these uh, usually in about 15 to 20 minutes from start to finish. But I have had a lot of practice. I've probably made a thousand of them. So I wouldn't say that's, that's everyone's speed. But like I said, the key is not to rush. You really just got to take your time with every step. Don't skip any steps. And pay attention. Patience and attention. That's how you get pretty rings. Or at least it helps. <laughs> Lisa, if your husband ever runs into any other trouble or needs any more help, feel free to leave a comment on one of my videos and, and I'll be happy to uh, help him out. I know this isn't the easiest hobby. has a lot of uh, unexpected difficulties. So if, if he ever needs any help, uh, I'm happy to. So what I do... I uh, went on Amazon. I ordered these like 100 packs of little coin ring boxes. They're available in a couple different colors. It's got like cotton on the inside. You can get them in black. I really like the gold ones. And I brand mine. You don't have to do this, but I brand mine with this uh, little stamp. And uh, ship those. And this. This is a four by seven uh, bubble mailer. So the box plus the, the bubble protects the ring pretty well. And I put like cards and stickers and whatever else in here too. These work pretty well. Um, I would say if you're going to buy these, I mean the first time, sure, buy 20, buy 50, whatever. But once you start getting on a roll with it, it's much less expensive to buy them at like 500 at a time. I know that sounds crazy, but it's pretty much like, it's pretty much the same price as like 50. Like you can buy 500 at the same price as 50. Like that's that's how the volume price breaks down. It's, it's wild. Yeah, that's what I do. And it's worked pretty well. I used to use the paper mailers. I like the, the plastic bubble wrap mailers a bit more because they're waterproof-ish. And I don't know, something about the paper mailers. 
They just got stolen more often. These white bubble ones. Like, nobody wants to steal them. <laughs> Which is fine with me. Alright, right at size 7. Beautiful. These are coin rings we got done today. All I gotta do is polish these up and pack them. We got West Virginia, Washington. This one's Missouri. If anybody has any questions before I hop off of here, now's the time to ask. Ohio. Uh, make sure to check out coinringmaker.com. And I hope you all have a great day. Hit the follow button so you can catch me next time. Thanks for watching. This was this was a good live. Thanks for being here. Sorry, I see you, Van. <laughs> Shout out to Van. <laughs> but I'm out. Peace.